Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome, everybody, to an episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 97, and today is November 22nd, 2021. I'm Bill, and I am joined, as always, by my geeking out co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome, guys. Hi. And I am also joined by a live audience at Dragonsteel Minicon 2021. Say hey, everybody. <laughs> Right, we have a crowd. It's awesome. It's not just a computer screen. <laughs> <laughs> now, just as a reminder, before we get started, this is not a spoiler-free podcast. Who knows what we're going to get into tonight, because this is largely a question-answer session, sort of a, a rap session with people around. So. Yeah, we're coming in a little less prepared. Everyone coming in just came from the Brandon Sanderson uh, panel where he read, what was it, the first two chapters? Or so we haven't metal? heard that. Get ready for disappointment. No. <laughs> No. Um, for those of you who do listen to the podcast recordings or you watch videos on YouTube, uh, it is possible normally for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies every other Monday night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us and take an active part in the discussion. The uh, podcast is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show, of course, will continue to always be free, but if you want to help us out, head on over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even a couple bucks per episode would really help us out. Uh, patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. It's a great community. We've got a lot of fun discussions. There's a lot of discussion right now going on about the new Wheel of Time series, obviously. Um, and then you also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. All right. Bill, what do those talking points say? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, then. <laughs> this is going to be a short episode. <laughs> so welcome to Dragon City. What, what have you all thought of the, the con so far? Have you enjoyed it? My wallet is empty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. There's been some pretty awesome stuff here, some amazing cosplays, some of them in the crowd today. And we have a yes, now we have a that veil, dooms, we have a Mistborn. That Doom Slug. another Mistborn. <laughs> yeah, some, uh, if, we'll probably put the picture out. There was an inflatable Doom Slug that yes. was incredible. Unbelievable. It was so cool. But yeah, no, these, this has been amazing. Who, who knew that a, you could just do a convention just for one author? <laughs> Seriously, like the only other one I've heard of is, is Jordan Con. Do, so, yeah. do y'all know of any other than those two? Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's kind of mind-boggling. But yeah, so uh, mostly we were just planning on you guys coming up with questions, and we'll try and respond. <laughs> so we don't know who wants to get be the guinea pig because we don't know how the audio will work. But all right, awesome. I mean, I, I have a question. So all right, come up. Everybody's looking at me now. Yep. No, you you volunteered to yourself as <laughs> tribute. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong book the author, but uh, come up on this side and let's. <laughs> There's, there's well, the I'm going to watch the audio, and we're going to see if this looks good. Okay, so I... I Go ahead and take your mask off. Just, just before I, I say anything, I'm like, what is, like, the level of spoiler on the podcast? Every, everything up to what you just heard at Brandon's thing. Don't, don't do that, because we haven't read we that We haven't yet. heard that yet, but... The, but the otherwise... thing, the, the Q&A that he just did. The, that's, yeah. that's all we're missing, because yeah. none of us... We I, I were in our say, booth. I just asked a question that I would love to talk about, but I was, I was going to say, it's just, it's been awesome, like... Just having him be here and having that rap out card. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, where'd you come from? I'm from all the way in Wisconsin. Oh, Holy nice. cow. Nice. Wow. Was a, uh, anyone here from further than Wisconsin? Virginia? Virginia? Yeah. Oh, Double Virginia. You sure? You, did you come together? If not, that's weird. <laughs> that's insane. I, could, I don't think I could do that long of a drive. Uh, oh, cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank I mean, it, it was rough enough for us. We, we had to go, like, what, five, ten minutes? I, so. I mean, I, I didn't go drive. to the same 7-Eleven I normally went to. It was rough. You went to a different 7-Eleven? I know, right? <laughs> oh, so, man. But yeah. All right. Come, right. come right up. Yeah, this is very freeform, experimental. We don't know what we're doing. Ask us about <laughs> us. Ask us about the Cosmere. Ask us about... It, it takes a lot of effort to make it this look this difficult. All right. So I have... 
Um, two functional questions that I've definitely never thought about slash other people that I've asked have never thought about. Okay. okay. Why can't you push push or pull on metal that is piercing a person's body? Like I understand plot wise why functionally can't, but mm -hmm. like what is the explanation? Uh, you know? My my guess, I there might there's probably a word of Brandon, but I don't well, know. Right. I'm really they're much better at doing the word of Brandon than I am. But my guess is that it's interacting with their spirit web. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because with, with hemallergy, of course, mm -hmm. there's that it that pierces and it kind of snags on the spirit web. Anything invested um is harder to push or pull. Mm -hmm. And so, because we do see at the very end when she's pulling directly on the mist, she is able to pull. So right. it's like, it, it's it's not necessarily impossible. It's mm -hmm. just a lot harder. And so. So if you were to like cut yourself and hold a piece of metal, would that also? I don't know. I don't know. I think it would depend upon the metal, mm -hmm. uh, just because it has to be hem hemallergically charged. Yeah, so one of, mm -hmm. if it's one of the 16. The I, I, my, it might be. I don't know specifically if it would, but there's a chance. Mm -hmm. That's Because we do know blood holds, a he like, will hold mm -hmm. a hemallergic charge longer than mm -hmm. if it's exposed to air. But, yeah. it, but it's not necessarily just blood, because like yeah. putting, she puts a coin in her mouth to, right. to, to protect okay, from, yeah. <laughs> from being right. told her Second pushed. question. So... In Era 1, only Mistborn wear Mist Cloaks. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. In Era 2, why does Ma does Wax wear a Mist Coat? I think it's fashionable. I then why don't cool. we see any other Mistings wearing Mist Coats? I think it's partially one. Uh, he's a lawman. And so, he is a lawman. And so mm -hmm. he's trying to, and he's, a, in particular, he's an allomantic lawman. So mm -hmm. I think it's sort of the mantle of being a Mistborn, even though no one is a Mistborn. Per particularly as a steel pusher. Yeah. Because that, you know, mm -hmm. that's what you saw trailing through the sky. Mm -hmm. Also, Wax is a showman. Mm -hmm. you, you, you notice when he goes to the roughs, he dresses as the dandy. Mm -hmm. When he's in the city, he dresses the, the rough lawman. You know, he wants to stand out and sort of show, I'm a little different. And so I, I, th I think that's kind of part of it is just, th it, this is my costume. This is, you know, this sets me apart. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. All right, yeah. No worries. That's a good question. All right. Come on up. So I was just wondering if you could use hemallergy to either forge a bond with a sprint of Roshar mm -hmm. or even to just give yourself access to the surges. And be able to use those. Yeah, there's a, there's actually a word of Brandon. Uh, Brandon has confirmed you could use uh, hemallergy to steal a bond. The problem is the spren ha is also has the option yeah. to break the bond. And I don't think a spren is going to be too on board <laughs> with. Uh, so I murdered your dude. You want to stick with me? Yeah. So, so I'm willing to bet it's probably very difficult. Now the question is, could you steal like a something similar to like a shard, not shard blade, the honor blade connection an honor blade connection or a dead shark blade yeah you might be able to do that yeah right, that's a, right. an interesting thought right. who's next yeah um i'll come on back to one i was thinking about this question so right. in relation to the end of rhythm of war mm -hmm. i'm gonna talk stormlight we've been getting a lot of this point i think yep. this is this is more if you can't tell it's more my forte but <laughs> Um, so we get introduced to the concept of anti-light. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I was thinking as I was kind of sitting here today is if someone were, so in secret history, we see an object made that Kalshir gets as allows him to basically connect. Mm -hmm. you, you, I, I'm yeah. trying, because I don't know, I'm trying to be kind are, of- Are you talking about the, the orb? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So my thought is if someone an organization or something were to make enough anti-light, mm -hmm. could they create a shard of anti-light, like an anti-honor shard? Now, I that'd I did be a ask, lot of. <laughs> I asked Brandon this, and I immediately got raffled. <laughs> so, um, and then the other the other thing that I kind of wanted to discuss because I kind of wanted to talk about it a bit, or at least hear other people talk about it a bit, is if that wasn't possible, if you can't create another shard. Could you create, in theory, like, in kind of modern words, an anti-light nuke? Where if you <laughs> gathered enough of it and then released it all, it would just kill all the investiture on the planet. So, so, second question. Like an EMP almost. I don't, yeah. I don't think you could do it to destroy the investiture on the mm -hmm. planet. 
you could definitely use it to create a nuke. An I mean, actual, we, saw, we saw what a little <laughs> tiny amount did mm -hmm. and, yeah. and blew up an entire room. And so, uh, and I definitely think, because in Rhythm of War, there's a point where Yesna considers what happens when people can create weapons that can kill thousands at a time. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, we know because we have those. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the anti-investiture is going to mm -hmm. create. It's going to start bringing modern warfare into, uh, into Roshar. And it's going to be very yeah. interesting because they already have delivery systems in the form of Windrunners and uh, the... Makers. Yeah. And whatever the what were the, oh, the high ones or yeah, what, whatever the heavenly, the, is it heavenly ones, heavenly ones. Heavenly. yeah, that, they're not smoking pot. The anyway. ones from above. Uh, but yeah, but your, what was your first question again? Um, if could you create an anti shard like anti honor or anti odium? I don't think you could because you have to get the stormlight from somewhere, mm -hmm. and so the problem is you'd have to have enough. You'd basically have to have a shard's worth of. Of, of honor to create anti-honor. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, you're already out of honor, I guess. So, so then on, on, on that note, could a shard be completely corrupted and destroyed and become just anti? So could they, could they corrupt a shard the way that they were corrupting, say, the sibling? Yeah. <sighs> My gut just says no, because there's, there's also a spiritual component to yeah, a shard think... that connects them to the spiritual realm. And I don't know how you would sever that for a shard because we, we, we don't get a ton of viewpoints, but we get the Odium viewpoint. And we don't know enough about shards to know yeah. <clears throat> exactly how. Well, and and they also, work with them. also when you're working on the scale of a shard, that's a lot. Like that's essentially it's effectively infinite, and so it's just like I I, I feel like it starts to get so complicated that. It might be theoretically possible, but practically completely impossible. I, th I think we would need an, at least an extra step that we don't know mm -hmm. about yet, because um, we saw because the most powerful anti shard weapon we've seen is Nightblood, and even he, all he could do was kill the the vessel, the vessel. and then he was and, and yeah, and then he, yeah, then he was absolutely <laughs> punch drunk afterwards. <laughs> And Which is exactly how a lot of us expect to feel on Thursday of this yeah. week. So, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can, can you talk a little bit about what the difference between what happened to uh, Honor being splintered mm -hmm. and the other vessels that we've seen that have died and, and why that's different? Because the, the vessels have been killed, but they weren't splintered. But uh, Honor, Tenemas is dead, but the, what's the difference? Man, there's a lot we don't know. Because well, first of all, the only other ones we know that were sort of splintered were uh, devotion and dominion. And, and they and have we, used the word splintered. And we to don't refer know them. how that happened, how exactly that worked. All there's, of it was off screen. We, yeah, we, we know screen, that, so. however, it was done. Odium did a worse job on them than he did honor, because that he they were the experiment. Mm -hmm. Those were the first ones that he splintered, and we don't know the specifics of it. I don't really even remember where it said. But he wasn't happy with the results right. of what happened. On I think it's probably in a letter with Lloyd. Yeah, that, he, that's he, most likely where. Yeah, it was. yeah he kind of just stuffed them into the cognitive realm because he didn't know what else to it's do. It's like with a them. port, like a port, a really bad murderer trying to hide a body. I think that's how <laughs> just tries to shove it into the co the, the cognitive realm. Nobody stuff. will just, find it here. Yeah, no, there, it's fine. <laughs> and he creates seven different Chaos. magics that, or however many. Yeah. Different like was at it least, six. At I least think four. Yeah. Yeah. We've already seen four. Because we have Chaishan, we have uh, Forgery, Forgery, we have Aeondor, and we have Dakor. The, whatever they're doing. The horror. I can't remember. Oh, no, no, because at least five, because there's also the uh, the bone. Uh, the bone that's, the, that's the Dakor. No, the bone guy from. Uh, oh, the blood stealing. Yeah. Blood stealing, that's what oh, yeah, so there's Yeah, we don't know. There's lots of versions of magic on Cell. Yeah. My favorite note about Cell is that it's so big that everyone acknowledges that each other exists, but they kind of just ignore each other. Because <laughs> it's like, what? 1.5 Earths big or something. Yeah, it is and larger. And they don't have airplanes or no. jets or anything. But. Yet. Yet. Yeah. Just wait. Air 4. <laughs> but um, they do have teleportation. So. Yeah, but limited. <laughs> Very limited. So. So. Yeah, only limited teleportation. So lame. <laughs> Roger? We, I'd like to um, hear what you guys think about uh, Dawn Shards. Oh, Dawn Shards. Okay. Dawn Shards and specifically 
because uh, we know that uh, Edwin Alzium split into 16 shards, mm -hmm. and then it, now we have Dawn shards. Do they fit in this hierarchy, or do they uh, exist outside of that hierarchy? Now, I've, I've read things that they say that a Dawn shard is made up of four shards that are related to it, but I think that sometimes when you start looking at that, you mm -hmm. end up trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It doesn't quite fit. You end up hey. with some shards that don't. Match. And we, we yeah. still don't know what two shards are, oh, right? Right, we still don't so know what two shards are. We still right. two shards don't know and what three Dawn shards are, right? So it's really hard to figure yeah. out yeah. how you get that all to fit together. Yeah, the um, only Dawn shard we technically know is change. And that's the one that Rissen's holding. Um, we also know that Hoyd held one at some point, and it's tied to why he can't harm anything at this point, but we don't know we really don't any more yeah. than that. Also, just as a heads up, if I repeat what you say, it's because I'm trying to get it under the mic just to make sure that it picks up. So Yeah, no, the Dawn Shards are interesting. Because uh, it, it does, I mean, Rissen gets one, she suddenly seems to be at a heightening of some mm -hmm. kind. Yeah, um, she's seeing, she's got perfect uh, pitch color like. recognition. And yeah, and which is interesting. Uh, and so it, it makes me think, because every every system in some way you know has a lot to do with the exception of skadrian uh you know you have to have the intent you have to have the command and it seems to be following the same thing but on some other level something almost primal or fundamental mm -hmm. and using it to break a god somehow mm -hmm. we don't know much but i i'm very interested to see how what happens to rissen because we only get one viewpoint uh, around her in Rhythm After. of War. Yeah. And it's it's from... Cheery, cheery. Yeah, cheery, cheery, <laughs> who doesn't seem to be focused on more than food at the moment. Yeah. And whether or not she's going to get scritches. Yeah, so. and, and focus is really a hard... Not even. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, going to your earlier part where you were saying, like, it's there's four Dawn shards and there's 16 shards and there seems to be four inside of each four. That I, I kind of get the feeling that Dawn shards were first and then when the shards split, they were kind of mm -hmm. fitting into those categories, but we don't know enough to know where they fit in that. Yeah, I've, I've that, heard that's specula my guess. I've heard speculation that the Dawn shards are actually what was used to shatter Adenosium. Of oh. course, that's pure speculation. So, so we don't know. Well, and there's a lot of temptation to try and fit it to the Allomantic table, since mm -hmm. it's divided into four pieces, and we already know that uh, the preservation originally tried to use this to get everyone to notice hey this is this is a thing 16, 16. it's important and then and everybody's like he tells eight. he tells kelsey <laughs> and he's like 16 huh 16 uh, th there's 10 but you idiot no that's <laughs> dumb it's, it's clearly 16 he's uh, like no i found the 11th and that was the extra that was the bonus yeah. one <laughs> i got a bonus medal dude so we had a question in the back did you want to come up closer Sure. Yeah. All right. So my first one, uh, we kind of brought up earlier the idea of breaking connections or stealing them in terms of investiture. When Ishar is um, oh, Ishar. Deal, like doing what he does. Right. Isharing all over the place. <laughs> yeah. He says that he's going to take um, <laughs> Dalinar's connection to the Stormfather and the... Uh, he says, Odium views you as his opponent. I'm mm -hmm. going to take that. Yeah. So my question there, would that just be changing the um, kind of how the in, like investiture works between them? Like, would it purely be changing it? So, for example, Odium can only give visions to Ishar now rather than Dalinar? Or would it also change perceptions? Like, would Odium now view Ishar as his opponent? Honestly, what Ishar is doing is something beyond what anybody saw because... Um, Field. It, it, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things. Like, first off, he's a bondsmith unbound. You know, he has no thing, um, no uh, limits, no limits, because he has he doesn't have the oaths to bind him that the other bondsmiths have have sworn. And also, this is Ishar come back after Roshar has changed dramatically since he was last around. And so, honestly, I don't know that we even know what's going. on. It feels like he's almost bending the rules of reality here. I, um, I, it, I actually think, so has everyone here seen the hemallergic chart? Because uh, on it, there's yeah. a very interesting one. Question uh, mark. 
Oh, it says, I, what, I, what metal was it? Was it Nicrosil? Oh, goodness. I right. don't remember. I can't remember. One, the one, the, 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 one, uh, one of them, they theor- it says, may steal destiny with a question mark. Yeah. And that sounds to me sort of what he was doing because mm-hmm. Dalinar was fated to fight Odium or whatever. And it seems like he was trying to change that so that he's the one fated to do so. And so I wonder if there's a connection between the two awesome. right there. I. It's hard to know, but it seems to me that uh, bondsmithing already is complete hacks and needs some balance uh, patching of some kind, because uh, with with no mana attached to it, no bonds, he is absolutely broken in more ways than one. Um, but it yeah. reminds me of uh, you had a roommate one time who just arbitrarily threw out the la- that Jordan now had the ability to define philosophy. No, I did that to him, unfortunately, oh. <laughs> to win a petty argument, and then he used it for an entire semester. And then suddenly he'd just say, like, philosophy is you giving me a nacho, and just, it was, it was broken. I and, it's just, and so it's just basically, like, he's changing everything, it feels like. Well, and we know that the, the, this was the power that sort of broke Ashen on some level. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. It seems a little reckless, because <laughs> when we see him in short order, he tries to steal the oath with the the storm father. He tries to steal the destiny of Dalinar well, and, some kind. And when he does that, it really bothers the the storm father. Yeah. He's like, "This should not be fought. This is not this okay." Is and, the, and then he he somehow binds the wind runners to the earth, so that the earth starts sucking out their storm light. Mm-hmm. It, he does all sorts of things, and if it weren't for uh, cleverly placed night blood. Uh, We'd be having a very different story going forward. Yeah. And then you had a second? Yes. Um, I was wondering if you could expand on... So we know that metals are the body of the shards. Mm-hmm. Um, and they seem to have, like, give you some kind of access to shards' power and be connected to them some way. But then you also have things like Stormlight, which also seems to be some kind of direct conduit mm-hmm. to shard power. So what's the difference between those two? So the way I understand it... There are three aspects, you know, just like you have the physical, the mental, and the, or the cognitive, spiritual. Spiritual. cognitive in, the, in the spiritual world. There's also, you have a solid manifestation, a liquid manifestation, and a gaseous manifestation. So stormlight would be the gaseous manifestation. Um, I believe the shard blades are made of what would t- we would probably call tanavastium. Um, how? We don't know. know. Yeah. We don't know exactly how that all works, except that the the spren are slivers of, of Tanavast, of honor. Um, and then liquid would be the, the pool. The liquid would be the, the perpendicular, yeah, yes, perpendicular. The, the shard pools. So um, th- that's the understanding that I've got of it. It's and like we they're, see, they're we all see a different similar thing on Skadrial, yeah. because yeah. obviously the god metals are the, the solid. Uh, for mm-hmm. preservation, at least, we see the mist, the mists are the gaseous and, form. And we also, also see it for... Uh, for ruin, um, there's a just the dark cloud yeah. around the the well of the and then obviously yeah. the perpendicularities mm-hmm. are the liquid, and so we don't know why, but there's something about that that mm-hmm. makes that happen. It seems to me there's not both the the liquid and the solid, or the the gaseous and the solid portions seem to have more power, mm-hmm. and then the liquid is which makes sense because liquid does tend to be the barrier between things in our world. Mm-hmm. It's the barrier between things between worlds. That's very uh, Lovecraftian. Yes. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank right. you. No Thank you. Thank you. All right. Who else got a question? Doesn't even could be about anything. Yeah, right? it could be about like j- just if you want to just shoot the breeze. That's fine. Yeah, we're cool with that. What's the color of your toothbrush? <laughs> white. Blue. Mine's white electric. <laughs> <laughs> so here I go again. But uh, you were talking about earlier on cell about how there's limited teleportation with Aeon Joy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at that, and we see stamp magic and the other magics working in different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that only Aeon Door is limited in distance? They're like, all actually limited in distance. So, for example, um, from what we know, forgery won't work the farther you get from the the that is it the Rose Empire is that yeah, yeah. yeah. from the Rose Empire. Um, e- each of them is actually physical, and it's a, a very real, very specific to sell because um, devotion and dominion were shoved together into that giant 
gooey mass of Fun. magic juice. Um, and so because they were shoved into the cognitive realm, which is actually tied to location, um, it works the same way. In the, it manifests in the physical world based on location. So yeah. then with, with the location, why does it... I, I feel like I should know this, but why doesn't it manifest the same way every time? Like if it is the same gooey mass, like when you're mixing a chemical, it's all going to be the same chemical. I think it has a lot... Homogenous, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. would. I, I would think it's. It might be homogenous, but I think the bigger deal is more the, the co how people view themselves cognitively mm -hmm. shaping the the land they're they're in. Because I mean, you think about Shadesmar and you see how it changes depending on what the people there think of it, and the fact that the oceans are the land because that's where people aren't very often, and then all it, the thoughts very, and yeah, and so it's, it's so it's a very concrete way of thinking about yeah. it. it's just that's the ocean it's that's the where the that's where the water is yeah so, so i, I kind of think of it as like they were saying that on cell it's location based and it's going to be fluid and change with how cognitive things work for it's, people. it's what makes the dark core monks so scary on that world because they undergo their transformation locally but the they magic it stays because mm -hmm. it's it transformed them it's done and so they can they don't have to access their magic the same way everyone else does but once they have it, they're good mm. to go. Because they kind of I'm not it. certain that's the case, but well, that, that's what we we've seen so far. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't seen it much more than just what's in the longest. So. It's it's going to be very interesting to see because we've also seen some hacks with the uh, at least with the IRE going to the cognitive realm, and they use some form of artificial connection to make it so that they're they they still have enough of a connection to sell so that they retain their immortality from being a Lontrian. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know how far you can take that. Now, well, I, I think that's due to the connection juice that they have. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because they're, 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 they're drinking it. Yeah, but they also do stuff to their building so that it has some of that power yeah. as well. Right. And so I wonder how far you can take that. Yeah. And I think uh, I think a certain uh, member of the... Uh, the, of the ghost bloods. The ghost bloods <laughs> might be interested in finding out where they got said uh, connection juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had a question over here. Sorry, we can't hear you very well. Go ahead and take off your mask if you need me to. Um, do we know why uh, the cognitive realm is different in different planets? Like, on our sharks, made of bees, but not uh, scattered. I, I kind of I think because how people perceive it, because it's mm -hmm. cognitive. And so in Roshar, they have their money, that's the beads. Money is power. Money, and yeah, and it literally. feels like it sort of reflects the power. This this is pure speculation, but we don't have any official answers. But but I mean, in in Scadrill, there's the mists everywhere, and so obviously it's gonna people are gonna think of in their space in their head or whatever. Be think, oh, mists, mists are just kind of how things just kind of get mishmashed, whatever. And so that's that's how I yeah. picture, and I hope that makes sense. Yeah, and then on Roshar, stormlight is often kept in the spheres. In the spheres, so, so yeah. It's, and so I think that's how sort of it ends up shaping. I'd be very interested to see what it looks like on uh, Nalthus. Yes. Where yeah, everything's with dyes. That. I wonder if it looks like a giant tie dye acid. Or if it's trip. like a big painting or, or Trinity. Or that's oh, going to be. I don't want to go to Trinity. <laughs> Trinity is a nightmare. Trinity is going to look like a yeah. horror film. I mean, it already is a horror film. There's <laughs> dead people literally floating everywhere. Seeing what they look like on the other side. Yeah. yeah. All right. Random questions just came to me. Do any of us know what. Does anyone know what the cognitive realm looks like at the Pure Lake? I mean, I'm assuming a lot of it's uh, very thin sheets of metal. We we do have a uh, a map um, with the giant bookmark that came out when uh, when Way of Kings was originally published, and I think that actually you got something similar to that with uh, the Kickstarter version of it as well. Yeah. I think but so. on one side it had a map of Roshar, and on the other side it had a map of Shadesmar. Um, and I th so I think it just sort of showed up as an island. Now, of course, who knows what else is going on with the Pure Lake? Uh, d that's just how it was represented on the map. But yeah, but we we haven't seen. We don't. Yeah, there's a whole lot we don't know about the Pure Lake. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fishing. Do you think the set and the ghost bloods are connected? Do we the think set the set and the, and the ghost bloods, bloods are, are connected? connected? I do not personally. Um, what I to per, just we'll let Jordan talk. He has uh, theories. Uh, I have theories. Uh, look, at, at any moment, I'm probably thinking of either Ghostbusters or Kelsey or any one time. So that's just what happens. Um, I personally think the set and the Ghostbloods are at odds, uh, goals wise. 
um, because one of the things that we learn from Rays is that they don't they, all they're interested in is power. They they don't worry about morality. Whereas the set, there's a lot of personal grudges going on, and they're being manipulated by by Trell, whatever Trell whatever is. <laughs> we don't we don't know yet. And Kelsier's whole goal with the the ghost bloods, at least it seems to me from the end of combining what we now know of the ghost bloods with the end of the uh, of the secret history, Kelsier is very concerned with. They didn't know what was going on out in the Cosmere, and it almost cost them an entire planet. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, we got to defend this planet at all costs from all the threats from outside. I don't think Kelsier would be really keen on whatever Trell is. <laughs> and I, I'm willing to bet what, what we're going to find out is that a lot of what the Ghostbloods are doing are a reaction to the set. And now, obviously, we're gonna, we have a whole book before we can find any of that out. Um, and so I'm willing to bet what's going to happen is I, I think we're in a deus ex Kelsey or somewhere in the lost metal <laughs> and it's going to be like, all right now, Hey guys, do you want to, do you want to form a secret society? I'm sure it'll be cool. And we're going to have a lot of really good oversight probably. Well, especially because <laughs> Brandon has said that era three is going to involve a lot of Kelsier. So, yeah. which I'm excited for, cause he said it's going to be sort of 19 eras, uh, spy thriller, 1980s. Yeah. Er, yeah. 80s, yeah. Er, 19. Did I say 19s era? 19 eras. Well, that's good. So. Yeah. All 19 <laughs> of the eras. Um, no, which I, I, I'm all for. And if like, I would just love if it's just like title, an actual, you know, like basically the FBI is trying to get Kelsier. And my, my whole goal for the, the, what, the where I want the Cosmere to end, because some people are like, I can't believe Kelsey is a bad guy. To which I'm like, I don't think you'd ever say he was a good guy either, but <laughs> I don't think he's ever really a bad guy as well. And what I want it to be, I've, I've said this on the podcast before, I want Hoyd has his set of plans, Kelsey has his set of plans. They're at odds with one another. We don't know what either of them are up to, but we know that they're, they don't get along. And I want them to start thwarting each other's plans in such a way that they both set up a situation where they both create mutually assured destruction plans where if either <laughs> one of them move forward with the plan their big goal whatever they've been working towards both of their goals fail and thus now they're in business with one another because now <laughs> they're stuck with each other and i want the cosmere to end with those two bickering like a married couple that are forced <laughs> together because they deserve each other yeah they do <laughs> oh hoyd hoyd's my favorite yes he is yeah, by the way, if you, I don't know how many of you came by the booth, but. Uh, oh, yeah, we've got a couple of uh, custom made Funko Pops that. Uh, mine one, is Shalon. Yeah. Mine is Hoyd. My Kelsier is still at home. It'll be here tomorrow. Um, <laughs> we also have a guest book. We want all of you to sign it uh, tomorrow. Just come sign the guest book. It's, it's, we won't spam you, we promise. No, it's just fun. So, yeah. All right, who else got a question? All right. So we mentioned kind of um, you could like ghost or um, Nightblood could like take investiture. Mm -hmm. but, um, if what if you made a blade like that, but with like a hundred times or a thousand times the breaths or like investiture, just to make it like could it do that much more? And could it like could it reasonably if you use that to make a weapon like that? Could you use that to then kill other shards? A shard could could a so sum it up so in case the audio didn't hear that could you make a nightblood like blade but on like a scale of 10 or using 100? more breaths <laughs> yeah because we know he was only made with what a thousand thousand breaths yeah i'm sure he's which is relatively <laughs> cheap for a weapon of that level of destruction mm -hmm. well I, I think that one of the things that kind of tweaked him because his, his command was destroy evil yeah i think the intent was also unclear and so it's just like destroy evil what is evil i'll figure it out myself as i go woohoo and um and then you know the the scholars not really quite knowing what they wanted to do they just sort of had a vague idea and are you saying like the vagueness is sort of what has led to the o the exactly. overpoweredness yeah. of the weapon? Mm -hmm. Well, that and the fact that he's been consuming breaths for so long because yeah. he wasn't necessarily as powerful as he is now, but he's now one of the most heavily invested well, yeah. objects in and the cosmos. And the algorithm of war where that happened. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But, well, and we see another blade like that. We know that uh, yeah, Vivina, we know that Vivina has one. And did, she doesn't have an aluminum sheath to that. I don't believe. 
No, and hers actually talks to her as well. Yeah. But we so, don't know much more. We don't that. know much more. But I think it's interesting that she doesn't have an aluminum sheath. So if it's just a factor of the blade, it will always act like this. If invested mm -hmm. with X number of breath, that's highly irresponsible. Vivina doesn't strike me as highly irresponsible. Yeah. And so I do think a lot, your, your theory on the, uh, the command sort of being mm -hmm. what led to the, the nature of the weapon, I think that might be interesting. Now, could you make a, a bigger, worse night blood with more breath? Maybe, but, but that it, would take a lot. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know on the on, on the time span. Cause we also know there's also sort of an upper limit of what he can drink mm -hmm. in. Now, it seems to me it expands a bit every time he gets to that limit, hmm. but it, but not, it doesn't seem to me like a, a ton. Uh, he's compared it to, for those of you who are familiar with it, capacitance. Uh, basically, every battery has a certain amount it can store, and you can't go much above it. And so, I think Nightblood has an upper limit of how high he can go, mm -hmm. and like he can always go higher, but it's asymptotically higher. Yeah. Br Brandon made sure to clarify with um, one of the reasons that he wrote the scene with Nightblood and Race. He wanted to definitively answer the question that people kept coming was, "Can you take Nightblood and destroy a shard with it?" The, the answer is no, you can't, but there's still reason. He, the, way he, the way he worded it was, you know, was Nightblood couldn't destroy Odium, but Race had a bad time. Yeah. And so, yeah. Well, because there was also the worry, what happened if we ever took him to uh, Cell uh -huh. with how the cognitive realm is oh, over there? Could he just yeah, drink it forever and just drain the planet dry? I still want to see if he has a different look on the, in the uh, cognitive realm. Oh, really? oh, did they? Yeah. And he said that no, you could not stick night blood in the planet and make the planet disappear. He does not have that high level. He cannot destroy a shard. He could take some of the shard, like when he uh, killed Odium. But in such an infinitesimal amount, it's not, it really doesn't mean anything as to how much it reduces the power of the shard. Because they're asking, you know, could you, could Odium yeah. be less powerful because he was attacked by night blood? He said, mm -hmm. Not any yeah, it's like infinity minus six billion is still infinity. It's still so, <laughs> um, it's so so that uh, Green Lantern, who's a, actually a planet, yeah, he's Mogo. safe. Mogo's yeah. safe. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the capacitance, is I think that would be part of it. I think the amount of breasts do matter on some level because that's going to give a base level. But just just like whenever you're making a construct that's just so supposed to be an arm, you know, just like grab things. It's like so you have to have a focus command. If it looks like an arm, it's going to be much more efficient. And so, I think the most efficient command you could give to a sword would be cut things or something like that because <laughs> it, it's already looking. It's, what it's it designed needs to. for that. Yeah. Now again, aluminum foil hats are securely on right now. So <laughs> this is we don't know. Like, specifically aluminum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, clearly. That, for the record, that's the best thing for Era Two: is the fact that everyone has <laughs> tin foil hats inside their hats, so they can't be alimentically pushed. It's so great. That and the fact that there are um, alimentic psychologists, yes, who, who, like soothing parlors and stuff. That's yeah. brilliant to me. Even though it starts to sound like an opium den, if you uh, if you do it the <laughs> and wrong I think way. there are some of them in. I'm yeah. sure there are. Hopium dens. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna drink. Oh. Uh, I don't forgive you for that one. Yes, you do. But I'm putting it on the list for title ep for episode titles. So if you ever read our, our episode titles and be like, where will they pull that from? That this is how it happens. <laughs> the random quotes. Yeah. All right. You had a question back there a little bit uh, ago. Yeah. No worries. Uh, so this comes from Mike Elden. He asks, um, if, how does Radium conduct anti-void light if investiture annihilates its opposite? That's an excellent question. Uh, I think it's because what it actually, the anti- uh, Void light. But the anti-void light eliminates void light. So it's whereas the gas. Ra which is the gas form, which racium is the, hmm. uh, the metal form. And the way that they describe, because for the record, None of this should work because sound and light are very different types of waves in physics. But luckily, Brandon wrote a, a world where none of that matters, and so it just works. And so it just works. But there's just not a way to do that with actual physics, like actual matter. 
like there's only antimatter um, which by all accounts it seems to be everything still made up of uh, protons electrons and neutrons in this world and so the only way you could uh, annihilate something would be with traditional antimatter now knowing Brandon traditional antimatter in his universe is somehow created by you know I don't know shoving night blood into you know some specific hole somewhere and mm -hmm. suddenly boom you get it that but sounds painful it does frankly <laughs> Um, yeah, so one of the things that Brandon has mentioned, um, I don't remember where I read it, but it's basically the laws of physics in the Cosmere work like the laws of physics in our world. But So how in our world we have matter and energy, in, um, in the Cosmere we have matter, energy, and investiture, and that is kind of what shifts everything around and makes it... Just a little bit different. Yeah. But there was a question, was that a question? Yeah. Um I have two questions. I think. Yeah, absolutely. So, if you were now a lancer, you could burn steel or iron. Could you, in, or like if you had the badge of warning or some more of a sword and burn it around with the steel or iron, mm -hmm. could you push or pull on a shard blade or shard blade? Because those are technically made of metal. Those would be difficult even still because those are those are god metals essentially. Can Where, you push or pull adium? Uh, yeah, because she pulled yeah, the bands of mourning. Yeah, she pulled or, or, or the sorry, not the actual bands of mourning, but the 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 gauntlet. The, the gauntlets. Gauntlet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so well, and that one of the things. Yeah, those. Oh. It's a, there's a lot of metal in those. I thought they were adium. You, but yeah, they push. Yeah, because he had you have adium stores uh, youth, so you can push on them. So it is possible. Um, but she was she was mainlining uh, <laughs> preservation, preservation That's true. to do it. So. Now, that said, with compounding, you can do a lot of things that mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't be able to do. And so I, I would answer, I think you can. It would just be very difficult, and it might be a better use of your resources to go for something else. And um, if you were a leecher or then morning drowned, mm -hmm. could you leech away Stormwind? I think so. Uh, he's talked about this. Yes, that, actually. The, could you? There's going to be some interesting stuff once these worlds start colliding, specifically with, with Duralumin and, uh, and and the other pu pushing the other metals that uh, let you do it. Well, for think, for for our listeners, they were asking, would it be possible as a leecher with a with the misting ability to leech stormlight from somebody? Well, and I think we've already seen a form of that because we have the whatever the device was that turned off the powers for the radiance. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, in uh, where the the, when, the, fa the fabrial. Yeah, the fabrial. Yeah, the fabrial. And the fabrials clearly have some sort of connection already to the metals because we've seen in the epigrams that uh, Navani does that she notices that specific metals have different effects and it's like, oh look, this <laughs> this pushes, this pulls, <laughs> this soothes, this. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how <laughs> mind blowing that those uh, those epigrams were when it's suddenly just like oh oh this is oh that's scatterian oh, oh scatterian oh. technology and oh they're they're all tied together Brandon stop it you're making my head well, hurt but the thing is we've already seen some fabrials on scatterial because mm -hmm. we can allomantically charge with uh, with harmonium right we can they started creating their own versions of fabrials. Because you can give a, a physical object, you can give it the ability to do something, mm -hmm. which is insane. Mm -hmm. So, like, they, we do that already with computers. We automate tasks, and now they can automate magic. <laughs> now, what happens when we bring this type of technology to a different world, like, say, Cell, where mm -hmm. could we store a spell from Aeon Door and bring it somewhere else? Like a glyph, you mean? Yes. Or have, like, a talisman like how they do in a lot of rpgs and stuff like yeah. that just be like boop there's your spell but I, we're, we're about to get into some of the weirdest magic interaction <laughs> we've ever seen and it's it's using pieces of gods to do it who i don't know if they're going to be happy about it part of me wonders if brandon is terrified as he moves <laughs> into these it's gonna get complicated yeah so all right okay um talking about worlds clashing kind of on this probably wouldn't like, it could happen, but if the, all of the worlds in the Cosmere were to fight, let's <laughs> say, at a basis point, like, in their stories, or where they are currently in their timelines, what world do you think would come out on top? 
Oh, battle royale. Oh gosh. It depends upon who's who, how far people are willing to go. Skadriel wins every single time if you're willing to use hemolurgy. <laughs> because you get to do you get to combine everything. You get to be very hacks. Um, however, I don't think they're they're willing to go that far. But Skadriel also is technologically ahead of everyone else right now. Yeah, they mm -hmm. have guns, and they, more importantly, they have aluminum bullets, which uh, are an interesting problem. Mm -hmm. What if what if Ishar? Exactly, and now if we now we <laughs> and so and, and he that, breaks reality. But Roshar is also heavily divided right now, and so it's it gets into these weird political lines. There so, there are also some things in uh, Six of the Desk Two that Brandon has read that you have not read. Oh, that's yet, right, I haven't that, to read it. That could also very much change. Your answer. So but yeah, <laughs> but it, but it's just it's 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 dependent upon how far everyone's. It's like the question of people have asked, like who would win, Kaladin versus Kelsier, and it's like, well, it depends. Have they been shoved in at the front front lines where they both get to see each other, yeah. or do, do, do they get plan time? Because if, it... if you get plan time, Kelsier wins because Kelsier will fight as dirty as yeah. it gets. It's yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. Kelsier, but if but if it's a straight up fight, Kaladin now has shard plate. Yeah. yeah if it's a fair fight. Then Kaladin wins. If it's not a fair fight, then Kelsier wins. Yeah, and so it, it all depends upon where the fight happens as well. Like, no one should want to touch Cell at all, because why would you fight them? Literally, the only place their magic works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it just depends upon a lot of factors. They've got a nice little deterrent system. Yeah, there. and then I'll, like, why would you want to fight Roshar and Arn Roshar where they get their stormlight? Yeah, that's the other thing. Is right now, the spring can't leave. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? There's all sorts of... Well, and I think that's the entire point of, of what the Ghostbloods are trying to do. I think mm -hmm. more than anything, the Ghostbloods are trying to keep everyone on their planets. Because hmm. Skadriel's Skadriel magic works everywhere. They're fine. And so I think they're perfectly willing to, like, yeah, you guys can do whatever you want over there. Just don't come over here. And so they're trying to make sure they get to determine who gets to go where. Mm -hmm. They want it, to control the trade. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it, it's a what's the speak softly but carry a big stick, mm -hmm. and I think that's their entire plan. Just make sure no one else gets as big a stick of you because they might start talking. <laughs> so I just had a question about I don't know if it's been addressed at all. It's an amazing but, beard, first of all. Good work. <laughs> that is impressive. Um, do you know if there were like god medals before the shattering, or if that was like because of the shattering? You want to know if there's adenalcium em? Yum, yum. I don't know, so yum yum. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, it, it, it seems like, um, with like the way that Ruin lost a lot of his body because of the burning of his metal, mm -hmm. uh, we don't exactly know how the shattering specifically worked, but if there was some sort of like god metal that was used up and that, that would then weaken the shard, I don't know if like the god metals existed before then or if that was just kind of like because of the shattering mm -hmm. now since they are on the whole shards instead of like a whole thing, now they're starting to manifest physically whether or not they did that before. I don't know if that's an address or not. I, I don't know a word of Brandon about this. I have I no full basis. I just, every time I look at the name Adenalsium, I notice it ends in the same thing as all of these god medals. So we don't really even know yet what Adenalsium was. Right. Like we, we know that it had some form of cognitive component because we know that Adenosium created Roshar actively and, and manipulated it and stuff. But beyond that, you know, maybe the name Adenosium refers to an aspect of this greater whatever thing. Yeah. Being. But yeah, no no clue. It's but it's a good it's not a bad theory, just because mm -hmm. we have seen it work before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just we just don't have anything to back it up. But the, the other thing to factor in there is the fact that the Skadrians were built by both Ruin and Preservation mm -hmm. so that they could burn metals. Yes. And so the question would be, is Adonalsium creating his people in a way that they could easily destroy an aspect of him? And we don't know, well, I, him is even the wrong thing, it's it, whatever it is. And so who knows what Adonalsium was or if it gave the people they need to, to do it. But it's an, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. What do you think the red mist is? What so is the, the planet in Bam's warning is the red mist? The red mist. The red mist. We know it's something to do with Trell. Trell. Uh, lot, popular theory is that Trell is an aspect of autonomy. 
Oh, that's um, an and, and for there's that. there's a reference to a trail in White Sand, but we have no idea how that connects. Mm -hmm. But just there's. I saw an trail. interesting theory recently. Oh yeah. Ooh. Uh, so Ooh. some someone theorized somewhere on Reddit, which is a nice vague place. Um, it basically is sort of the cognitive realm on cell, given how much <laughs> it rages and stuff. But um, the theory is basically that the trail we see in White Sands isn't the trail. What the theory is, because of the, the way the timeline works, is that Trell may have found his way to Skadriel and learned about the ancient religion of the stars. Because those who don't re remember, Trell, 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 Trellagism. Trell, yeah, Trellagism was a religion on Skadriel, we learned from uh, Sezet. Mm -hmm. And it was a religion based around the stars and how there was this one hateful god that was a single star that, that burned out all, all the, star, you know, the, the oh, stars oh, in the sky. So, yeah, so he can't see them. Well, let's think about White Sands. If he's on the day side of Taldane, he would have never seen stars. Mm -hmm. And so the theory goes that he went there and became obsessed with the stars, and he started Trelegism. And now autonomy's piggybacking off of it, and mm -hmm. this aspect of him, Trell, is, is using what someone that maybe he was keeping tabs on, a wanderer from his planet, and using it. That is hmm. interesting. I I, yeah, I'd that. never thought about that. I wish People I could give credit where credit was due. Things. I'm, I'm, gonna... not, I'm not convinced, but I'm not. Yeah, there's I can't, something there. I can't I dismiss it outright. There's something there. We have two questions over there. Yeah. Okay, so for, for our podcast listeners, um, they asked whether as the worlds become more aware of, of each other and as there's... Aware of the actual distances between the planets or the cognitive it, realms going to be farther apart. So Brandon has actually talked about that. So the space itself where, where nobody is, he said it'll remain pretty separate. If they build, say, a space station, suddenly that'll appear in, in between, between, but... But the space itself, because space is vast. Space is enormous. And, and it's, it's ironic. The, the vastness of space is what will actually keep the space quite small. Small. <laughs> like it will extend out as it gets more populated, but not that much. But, it, but it's the populated areas that would actually Expand. develop. Yeah. All and, right. We are almost out of time, so yeah. we do need to start wrapping up, unfortunately. Mm. All right. Uh, should we take one more uh, question then? We have to get it through the... I mean, yeah, sure. You yeah, have let's one take more, one right? more. No, I'm just the one. I have one okay, more. okay. Sorry. Um, I'm I'm not super familiar with autonomy at all, but with Trell being kind of an aspect of autonomy, do those aspects kind of work autonomously, um, where they see themselves as their own individuals, or would they like be aware of their connection to autonomy? Kind of like a high mind I don't know that we, I haven't seen anything concrete about it. I would think that there's kind of a balance of I am Trell mm -hmm. and I am part of autonomy and how they balance it. I they're don't know. It might it very well they're autonomous. So I think they probably would balance it and and I almost wonder if totally theorizing here that the older ones might feel more themselves than connected to autonomy. But I don't know. We I don't remember seeing anything concrete about it, but that's how I would picture it. It makes so. me think of the uh, oh, what's it called? The religion on Roshar about the one, where they talk about we are all part of the one, and and we've all been sort of sent out together to experience our own things, and then we we'll come, come back, come well, together. Yeah. You know, so, so, all right. Don't have a concrete answer, but that's my theory. All right, I'm gonna skip through most of our. Uh, outro stuff today just because you're all here that's, that's yeah. fine everybody's here and yeah um but do we want to just give a quick yeah explanation so, of where uh, we are what we're you can find me on twitch.tv slash splice stream uh i mostly do smash brothers content uh focusing on amiibo versus amiibo and humans versus amiibo which is a new thing so if you're into smash brothers definitely visit our booth tomorrow and uh i'll show you how you can uh, participate yeah amy um i do 
cosplay. I was Vin earlier today. I'm not because wigs hurt after a while. <laughs> um, and my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is cat, at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay and my website is www.coincidencecosplay.com. Wow, that's a lot of C's. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm selling dice at my booth, but they're, they're big, big plush 20s and everything else and I have big sets and stuff. But um, yeah, so stop by. I'm starting to run out of some things. Yeah, so, for, for the audience here, make sure to stop by the booth tomorrow. Yeah, because so. I'm... And give Amy money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank Jordan you. will show. <laughs> and then I've got another podcast with my friend Dylan. We talk about board games. So if you like board games, go check that out. It's called The Innkeeper's Table. And we have new episodes on Friday mornings. Um, and yeah, you can check us out on uh, Instagram as well at Innkeeper's Table Podcast. Or you can email us at innkeeperstablepodcast at gmail.com. Um, let's see. Uh, any Definitely. final thoughts? For Visit our booth while you guys are here. Yes. It's awesome We'd that you love guys to see came. You. I was really worried we were going to be talking by ourselves. So. Yeah, this, this is so awesome. This is really been, cool. Y'all have been great. Who here has seen the podcast before? Yeah, we're curious. So yeah. who's, who's seen it before? Cool. Oh, wow. A bunch Yay. of new people then. Nice. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, we're, we're on, uh, you know... We're Anywhere on any podcast place that you can find. And then we also have a YouTube channel as well. We have video. We and record we have everything an Instagram, which is Cosmere Studies. And our Facebook is Cosmere Studies. And our Twitter is Cosmere Studies. So find yeah. us that way. Yep. And yeah, come by the booth, sign the guest book, and pick up one of our business cards. Cause Admire Suni Cub we're really my proud giant spear. Yes, she made shirt. a physical Suni Cub like really from cute. Era 2. <laughs> yep. and it's he's not quite as sloppy, but he's very fluffy. <laughs> Um, special thanks to our patron producer, Mims Laundry Service, now hiring color removal specialists, Awakeners Preferred. In addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash innkeepers table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions for the show, email them to CosmereStudies at gmail.com. In our next episode, we're going to be discussing what exactly it means when Dalinar says, I am unity. So join us for the live recording on December 6, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.twitch.tv slash innkeeperstable. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, our live audience here at Dragonsteel Minicon, and myself, thanks for listening, and remember, there's, there's always, always another, another secret. secret. Another. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah.